Well, hello, and here is some of the news. It's that special time of year again, where the weather outside is, uh, frightful. Families are huddled together for warmth. Everyone is indoors, also known as all the other times of this year so far. But don't worry, folks, because this holiday season, we'll all be getting the biggest gift ever, a Texas-sized gift. And that is the Federal Relief Package. Maybe. Maybe not. We're working on it. It's like the only thing they should be working on because it's their job and junk, but don't worry, they're getting to it. Just as soon as they pass a $1.4 trillion spending bill that includes border wall funding, try to block court packing, go after Twitter because it was mean to President Sour Pants, and also weaken democracy. Just, just gotta, gotta do all those things, and then they'll, you know, totally help. After Thanksgiving, of course, which the left wanted to cancel. Then we'll get what we desperately, desperately need. I mean, not where Americans get individual checks. That's not actually in the $908 billion proposal being debated. But hey, at least corporations won't get sued if they literally work their employees to death. So that's Good for them. God bless us, every corporation. Although, to be fair, there is some talk of individual checks by a couple of people, a little bit. So, who knows? Oh, and look here, at least our new president-elect is like saying that maybe we'll still get something, perhaps, no promises at the moment. I mean, that's, that's good. We can probably expect something in like 2021. Not universal basic income, of course, because according to that same president-elect, doing that would go against a future that puts work first. That's that blog post by Biden saying that UBI would be bad because children should be rewarded for hard work, and back in his day, a paycheck was about dignity, and other old out-of-touch phrases that don't include a plan to actually address income inequality or poverty. But hey, we don't have a Nazi in charge anymore, for now, because hey, work first. Work sets you free. That's not Nazi stuff. Like, if there was a guy who argued that living past the age of 75 is bad because they don't work, they play after their long lives. And at a certain age, it raises the question whether old people's consumption is worth their contribution. No Nazi stuff there. Anyway, that guy's now on Joe Biden's coronavirus task force. But anyway, like I said, we got rid of the Nazi president. And that- Oh, Mr. Cody! Mr. Cody! What the f*** is this, man? Hi, Mr. Cody! Hi, Warmbo, a beloved character that we all know. Listen, I'm kind of in the middle of some more news right now, so maybe we could just- That's why I'm here, silly goat! I was thinking, hey, maybe this year, just this once, now that everything in America is back to normal- Back to normal? What are you even talking- Just this once! Maybe Mr. Cody doesn't have to worry about the news! Maybe Mr. Cody can put down all his papers and maybe stop talking bad things about certain people who are just trying to help and enjoy the holiday season instead! Wouldn't that be swell? I mean, I enjoy the holidays. I'm gonna watch Eyes Wide Shut after this. That's Christmassy. That's not Christmassy. It's kinda Christmassy. I'm not talking about some movie, Mr. Cody! I'm talking about real holiday tradition, decorations, a warm fire, friends and family getting together. It's not really the year for that. What with the, you know, overwhelming viral outbreak. We don't have to let some virus stop us. We kind of do. That's the point. Not if we use our imagination and throw us some more news holiday special. Absolutely not.
uh, look, I can't really deal with your noise otherwise. Lay off, you fucking shirt. It's like legal now. Federally even, sorta, maybe. Sounds like something to be cheerful about. See? Good things are possible after all. Like saving Christmas. Now come, join me on a magical carriage ride. Yeah, except it's not gonna pass in the Senate, so you know, not actually possible. Not to mention that it doesn't really help all the people still in jail for selling a now mostly legal drug, so that's weird, huh? How there are still people in jail for that? Some of which were put there by our next vice president? Hey, Cody. What is it, Warmbo? Place is gone. Nope, none of that. We're done with that. You had your one song. We're moving on from the bit. Good bit, Warmbo. End of bit. Not with this. <sighs> this is gonna be a whole episode, isn't it? What is the fastest way to make this stop? It stops when I say it stops. Silly goat. It's our holiday special. You only get one a year, so you better make it a good one, or Wombo will be very upset, and Wombo won't know what he'll do then. Okay, wow. So what if I did the news, but like holiday themed? That is acceptable. Okay, cool, cool. A little thrown off by your sudden omnipotence, but I'll give it a shot. Maybe if you could just close your window and I'll... You know. So, here's some holiday news. Santa is choosing his new elves for the upcoming, for his elf cabinet. Is that um holiday enough? Okay, well, there's the chief of st st stockings, Ron Klain, a real establishment elf. You know, back to the boring old poli North politics. Aren't you happy that you have a, a Santa and elves that you don't have to think about anymore? It's so, it's so great. I'm sure the rest of the elf cabinet is just as boring. Nothing to see here. Just, just be happy. The elves aren't Nazis, right? Like, gee, all oh, whiz. Maybe I'm just an angry aardvark here. But the fact that we've risen past the extremely low bar of the former Santa and our preferred Santa team won, it sure seems like we're gonna get lazy and forget a lot of principles because it's all about teams and not principles. Why do I think that? I don't know. Perhaps because it's already a thing that's happening. Like maybe, for example, if Santa elect J Saint, if Saint Nick picked a budget director who has in the past suggested that we make countries like Libya pay us back for what we've done with their oil. And that happened to be the exact same thing we once criticized the loser Santa, Don, the other Saint Nick for, then it would sure be mask off hypocrisy for anyone not upset about this new appointment, right? That's Nira Tandon, by the way, the elf president and elf CEO of the Center for American Progress, a liberal policy group that took $1.5 million from Elf Bloomberg and then removed his name eight times from a report about anti-Muslim bias in the U.S. Ah, so it's that kind of American progress, where you progress the amount of money you make by funding your think tank with Bain Capital and Blackstone Investment Banking Executive Cash. Got it. Hey, weird. Neera Tannen once wrote and tweeted a bunch of stuff about Anita Hill and how the outrage she felt about the way she was treated inspired her to get into politics. You know, in that whole sexual harassment testimony during a confirmation hearing that Joe St. Nick proceeded over and like kind of apologized for, but not really enough. Anyway, once Tandon got her position from New Santa, she deleted like a thousand elf tweets and also changed her elf profile from calling herself progressive to a liberal instead. That's interesting. It's almost like, regardless of Santa party, no one really believes in anything, but whatever, hey. You got the neoconservative vote, so good job there, I guess. Look, I get it. Obviously, we're thankful that the new Santa is more stable than the old Santa, and like that we've veered away from fashing through the snow. But our obligation 
is to calling out the systemic failures of the entire North Pole. Not just the North Pole when there's a bad Santa in charge of it. Because that's what got us into this mess in the first place. Because yes, the problem with Santa centrists is often that they pretend both sides are equally bad. But the answer isn't to blindly follow one Santa side under the greater good principles. Santas should be called out. Because while some suck way, way more than others, they all suck often in the same ways, all of the Santas. And when they appoint a f***ing member of the Raytheon Board of Directors to be Secretary of Defense, people need to show them that this isn't acceptable, as they got upset with the other Santa's Secretary of Defense being a Raytheon lobbyist, cause it's not acceptable Santa behavior. Raytheon, Ray, Reindeertheon, it's Santa stuff, we're not, it, it's make-believe Santa stuff. This is a, a holiday special. Anywho, Reindeertheon freaking loves dropping their, um, gifts on this place called Yemen. See, they sell the gifts to Saudi Arabia, and then Saudi Arabia uses the gifts to commit human rights violations, killing more than 17,500 Yemeni civilians with these gifts. And when the United States tried and failed to stop the Saudis from doing this, Reindeertheon flat out ignored the US and just kept selling gifts. They've been selling gifts to drop on Yemen for a while now, including during the Snowbama administration. And we were like, mad at the bad Santa administration for this. Like, it was a reason he was a bad Santa. And at one point, the other elves in charge, led by this one really cranky elf, tried to make Bad Santa stop supporting the Saudis for dropping gifts on Yemen, but was voted out by all of the GOP elves, and also Doug Jones, Elf Doug Jones, who voted in favor of continuing to bomb, I mean gift, Yemen. Elf Doug Jones, also known as Biden's possible new attorney general, Santa's new snow turny general christmas and also f yemen i guess that's a good old bipartisan fucking anyway good for our first black elf pentagon chief lloyd austin very progressive stuff oh wow yeah good for progress that's right warmbo turns out it doesn't matter the color of your skin so long as your hands are willing to be soaked in red Presidents Truman and Eisenhower are smiling, says Michael f***ing Steele. Wait to reach across the aisle to the guy who once ran a fire Pelosi bus tour. I mean, he's not wrong about that, but you know. Also, cool red hat from 2010. They sure love those red hats. <gasps> like a Santa hat! Sure, man. Also, neat fact for all you fact lovers out there who f*** facts. This new secretary of El Fence was also appointed on the board of directors for Tenet Healthcare, a for-profit hospital system which, again, for you fact perverts, once had to pay $900 million for false billing practices, a company that, while Austin was on the board, paid $1.5 million to lobbyists in order to receive billions of loans from the CARES Act. The lobbying company they used the most being Brownstein, Hyatt, Farber, Shrek, a company with close ties to the uh, bad Santa administration. So gee, maybe it's just rearranging the pieces of the same gross machine is what I'm getting at? His first pick for the Department of Health and Human Services was a lady who tried to shield nursing homes from COVID liability and I guess luckily declined the job. A sparkling new director of national intelligence who had just praised the previous intelligence director under the bad Santa. Despite that one being really into torture, a director of Homeland Security with a history of light corruption in the form of offering citizenship to big money spenders regardless of where the money came from, resulting in an expose that showed visas approved for money launderers and child pornographers. Happy f***ing holidays, Jesus. Who is helping to even vet these people? Oh, it's an Apple exec who once lobbied in favor of Trump's corporate tax cuts. Yeah, that checks out. And just like Facebook and Google executives. We love Facebook and Google, don't we folks? Hey, who do we get to handle climate change? Oh, John Kerry, good. What a great pick to lead the drastic changes we need to make in order to save ourselves from existential damnation. When I think of people who are plugged into the challenges of building a sustainable future, I definitely 
definitely think of a guy who's been in politics for 50 motherfucking years. Anyone else tapped to helm the climate change initiative? Oh good, that's Cedric Richmond, the new head of the White House Office of Public Engagement, who apparently has a whole bunch of ties to oil and gas companies, and has quote, vowed to serve as a conduit straight into the White House for American corporations. Thank goodness. You know how those corporations don't get enough political representation? Corporation lives matter is what we always say all the time. Anyway, the office is part of Biden's effort to reach out to conservatives because it's apparently a good idea to compromise with the people who once publicly pledged to hinder every action of President Obama and then did that thing. And then Obama just kept trying to compromise and reach out, at one point literally inviting them to watch movies with him and getting blown off. Like, he invited five Republican senators to watch Lincoln with him, and they said no. And then they elected the guy who kept saying he was born in Kenya, and now Biden would like to reach out to them, and mostly them. You know how the GOP appeals to their far-right base, who in this case are deeply frightening conspiracy theorists, and how that's been pretty successful for them so far? Well, the Dems went another way, by um, ignoring their activist and far-left base that just wants to do something about climate change and give people f***ing healthcare, and instead are courting moderates and Republicans as, like, an alternative to the GOP? You know, like, if you can't find any Nutella, you might grab some Nutmaster. Biden is the Nutmaster. That's how he wants to be seen. For people who definitely prefer but can't find Nutella. Our Nutmaster in Chief. And you know how Nutmaster is so popular now and definitely grew to power as the premium choice for all your nut spread needs. Testicles. What was I talking about? Nutmaster. Apparently, it comes in a white tahini flavor as well, so you can slather your morning toast with it, sopping with that white Nutmaster, heated up in the microwave, warm Nutmaster, pearly. Hey, speaking of Nutmaster, you remember this? I believe history will look back on four years of this president and all he embraces as an aberrant moment in time. Oh yeah, you remember it. The thing that's the root of the entire problem. The moment Biden stepped into the presidential race, he did so under a completely naive and hilariously wrong premise that President Trump was somehow an aberration not representing the Republican Party. And um, can you f***ing imagine thinking that? Or that the solution to him was going back to everything that led up to him? And he's not the only one. Moderate Democrats seem absolutely obsessed with the idea that Trump doesn't represent the GOP they know and love, despite him being the perfect summation of everything Republicans have been building toward. Look, we Democrats have always had plenty of differences with the Republican Party. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's precisely this contest of idea that pushes our country forward. But what we heard in Cleveland last week wasn't particularly Republican. One of my prayers is that the Republicans will take back their party. The country needs a strong Republican party. It's mm -hmm. done so much. Which um, president do you think they're talking about as the strong Republican party? The Iran-Contra ignore AIDS guy? Maybe the no gay marriage bomb Iraq torture dude? Or was it the first crime president? Maybe they're talking about some notable candidates. See Palin, Sarah colon Obama is Muslim lady. See the nearly two thirds of House Republicans who casually supported overturning the election and effectively committing treason. Because it should be noted that Republicans don't think this way, and in fact, are far less optimistic that we can heal the divide in 2021. Because for all their attempted coups and bullshit, the GOP is at least not a bunch of naive con- Youpid. Youp and Donner and Blitzen. Hi, Warmbo. I kind of forgot you were there. You're not talking about Santa at all. You know what? I'm not. I'm sorry, but there's just too much to talk about that isn't festive, okay? I'm sorry I broke your little heart, Warmbo. You can go now. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. I didn't want it to get ugly, but like, it's a puppet, it feels nothing. So yeah, I guess we can look forward to four years of just- You lied to me, Mr. Cody! Uh Hey, Warmbo. I, uh, 
I didn't know you lived so close. I don't. It's the wand. It gives me a power you could only dream of. No mortal man nor beast can approximate my infinite level of potency, Mr. Cody. <laughs> Neat. Do you doubt, Wombo? No, I... I could probably throw you across the room, but I'm sure that- Wombo will show you his holiday power! Oh god! Oh my god! I'm clay! I can't feel my heart! I can't feel anything! My face barely moves! Holiday Cody! Here's some news! Somebody kill me quick! I wanna die! 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 You're a f***ing demon! I'm your holiday miracle! And if you don't want me to take any more festive actions, perhaps Mr. Cody can get into the spirit of things! Stop fussing about politics and the election and just be thankful we have a new, better president and that Trump isn't in the White House! But I- wait, what? You don't really want to hurt Joe Biden, do you? That would be biting the hand that feeds you, Mr. Cody! You don't actually care about the holidays at all, do you? Of course I do, silly goat! I just think, you know, wouldn't it be even more like the holidays if we were a little nicer to each other? Especially to good old Joe! We've got to bring civility back, especially towards the... the man who's... The new president now! There's some more news holiday special will return after these messages! Wait, what? Oh, hi! Happy everything, everybody! Wombo teamed up with Skillshare, so the first 1,000 subscribers who click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity! Just click the link in the description or go to skl.sh slash someone news 12201. Cause Wombo says, see, um, hi, cause Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Like Wombo! Explore your new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. But not lost forever, that would be scary! You can do illustration, or creative writing, or music production, or graphic design. Other stuff too! It's for learning, so there are no ads, like this one! And they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay, um, you can die, you can, you can stay focused! And follow where your creativity takes you at less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, whatever money is! Wombo got Skillshare as a gift from Mr. Cody, and Wombo took a class called uh, Simple Character Animation, Create a Walk Cycle with Do It from Fraser Davidson. And now, here's some more Wombo! It was quick and easy, and now Wombo's got legs! Yay! The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Go to skl.sh slash someone news 12201. Huh? And we're back with Mr. Cody and his best friend Wombo. Mr. Cody, what would you say is your favorite holiday song? Look, Wombo. I like you. I really do. But this isn't a holiday special. We're gonna talk about politics, okay? And the people in charge who suck! That's what we do! It's the point of the show. So inevitably, Biden will be... Okay... Jesus, how... Okay. I will... I will... I will talk about how bad Trump is. As a compromise. Okay. Cool. Okay, so here's some news about Trump and just Trump. Trump stuff. Trump stuff. Remember when he said Kofifi? Sure do. That was fun stuff. Okay, so speaking of tweets, the still President Trump 
as in still able to use his power and perhaps something we should be paying attention to because of that, has continued to tweet that despite numbers existing, he is the rightful winner of the election. At this point, even turning against the very Supreme Court justices he appointed after they refused to mournfully finger blast his dead dog of a stolen election claim. Wow, dude. Warmbo, don't you have somewhere to be? Maybe give me a little space, okay? This is, it's, it's been very emotional, so. Well, okay. I'm gonna go for a little while. Gonna go retweet the Winkin' Project. Yeah, you do. Don't worry. We'll get to, um... Those guys, too. Look, listen, look, look here. I think we all know about the dangers of Trump running again in 2024 and his refusal to concede and the possibility of extremists doing violent bullshit in his name. I don't want to, like, hand wave that stuff, of course, but I also think that focusing only on those possibilities might blind everyone from some lasting damage brought on from Trump that the next president could easily ignore and exacerbate. For example... You might have heard that Donald Trump has reversed more than 100 environmental rules, including a narrowing of which waterways are protected by the Clean Water Act, mainly by excluding streams and rivers that are isolated from larger waterways used for travel and commerce. This is despite an EPA study that concluded, quote, that streams, regardless of their size or frequency of flow, are connected to downstream waters and strongly influence their function. Meaning that by excluding smaller streams from the Clean Water Act, you are essentially negating the entire absolute f***ing point. And while now that Trump is gone, you might think it's a simple matter of reversing his rule, it turns out that it's far more complicated than that, thanks to a conservative Supreme Court, inevitable court battles, and developers currently rushing to exploit the current rule. The damage is done. And the reason Trump was able to undo so much of Obama's rules is that he had the Congressional Review Act on his side, something the GOP used frequently thanks to their majority. But sure, yeah, let's let's actually let's let's work with those folks. Point is that even if Biden is able to change the rules, it'll take years and then the next Republican in charge will just change them back. And I don't know if you know this, but it's very hard to make meaningful environmental change when you keep reversing it every few years. It's a fucking merry-go-round, a jaunty horror machine that swings the ideology zigzag like a stripper's helicoptering dick. And this is assuming that Biden actually does something quickly about the Clean Water Act, something that environmental groups are just assuming he'll do. Hey, Notice how this problem really has nothing to do with Trump, but rather the GOP's decades-long boner for hip-tossing Mother Nature in tribute to Big Papa money bags? But again, sure, let's, let's reach out to them and compromise. You know, only half bleached the coral reef. Oh, and speaking of water, that thing that gives humans life, it's now a f***ing Wall Street commodity. It has its own NASDAQ letter thing. You know the thing? The letters, whatever that thing is. I'm not good with money. Because it has value now. Because we're running out of it. And I don't know, maybe we need some kind of drastic resolution or new deal to guarantee access to fresh water so the next Jeff Bezos scheme isn't just selling the concept of moisture. I don't know, maybe that's too aggressive of a stance and we should just take whatever we can get and make smart infrastructure investments, whatever the f*** that means. Probably not a serious rush, huh? My point is that there's kind of a sort of a lingering urgency here regarding not only the damage that Trump did, but all the damage that came before that. We were already in trouble before Trump made us more in trouble. It wasn't just the last four years where the pendulum swung far, far into the right. And it's not enough to course correct only slightly because that still puts us in the rough radius of fucked. And I'm not just talking about the environment, but all of the many Trump policies he's now working to lock into our system. Not to mention the discourse and psychology and political compass of an entire country. This country, actually, which currently leans to the center-right ideologically. And this is despite, very important detail, more Americans also preferring Democrats. Why? 
you ask or you don't ask because you're cool like Cody and know the answer because being a moderate isn't actually a moderate political stance. And like, I super can't stress that enough. This comes from a national study out of the Ohio State University that found in a survey of 150 colleges that moderates and conservatives pretty much believed the same f***ing things when it came to questions of global concerns and justice and diversity. And in fact, when you compare most of the 2020 Democratic candidates to the rest of the world, they lean far into the right. And when people call themselves centrist, that probably makes them to the right of Democrats, who you could argue are the actual centrists. And so when everyone talks about going back to normal with Trump, what they're really saying is that they want to go back to the exact climate that was pushing us to Trump in the first place. The Obama administration, which, to his own admission, was equal to traditional moderate Republican values. Hey, Warmbo, you hear any of that? I think he's gone. Maybe taking a little puppet shit or like, dead? I hope he died. What I'm getting at here is that because of the unfiltered grotesquity of Trump, this new election was a surprisingly great way for Republicans to push Democrats even more to the right by distancing themselves from him, or rather split the Democratic Party in two different directions. He's fragmented everything, which in theory is actually good. Like if there was a more progressive party that ran viable candidates that weren't Joe Biden, you know? But at the moment, that is not a thing happening. And rather, the part of the party currently running things is the same beige group of f**ks who think the Lincoln Project is part of the resistance, who want to welcome these loathsome dips into the big blue tent, even though they seriously didn't do anything to actually help Biden win. Like, for realsies. We never got those fabled never-Trump Republicans switching teams, did we? Trump actually got 10 million additional voters this election than the last. And in fact, one study found that the more viral a Lincoln Project video got, the less persuasive it was. The election, albeit resulting in a better direction, was a terrifying realization that this country was barely affected by four years of Trump's oafish fascism, and a sign that the Democrats have to really buckle down if they want to keep power. You know, like, offer bold solutions to things like wealth inequality and police violence and healthcare and climate change. Not plenty bold! but actually bold. Things that would make a noticeable difference in the lives of Americans. All of them. To show them a better option to Trumpism. Another phrase for it would be progressive ideas. And yet instead of that, there's almost a hostility towards young progressives who want to push Democrats more to the left. And so what we're left with is a political party that has completely abandoned embracing any unique and progressive policy in favor of reaching across to the other party that's done nothing but hinder them. With a Biden cabinet that we simply have to accept is bad, while being told to just be thankful we no longer have Orange Man and his marginally worse cabinet, and that we should be glad that everything is back to normal, despite normalcy being something we simply cannot go back to nor would we want to go back to it. Normal is an even more polarized and less enthusiastic third term of the Obama administration that led directly to Trump, literally, as in 12 out of 16 of Biden's top cabinet picks are just people from the Obama administration. Or as Biden phrases it, bold new thinking, holy fucking Christ normal. Normal is why we had Trump and we cannot go back even if we wanted to. We're Frodo at the end of Lord of the Rings, or maybe a more iconic example, Mario Mario at the end of the Super Mario Brothers movie. We've seen the void, the millions of Americans boldly rejecting reality and are changed. The flamboyant animated blue genie is out of the bottle and we can't pretend like it's going back in. A whole new world, you dig? We can't pretend like if Trump doesn't run in 2024, another Trump-like ghoul isn't going to take his place. Or just as bad, just an average GOP politician. Average still being absolutely horrifying. I'm back, you scrooge! F**k! Warmbo! How much did you hear? I heard everything! Wombo is always listening, and it's been made very clear to us that Mr. Cody just can't open his black, shriveled heart to a little holiday cheer and civility! Listen, man. 
I like the holidays as much as the next person, okay? But I can't ignore that Joe- Silence, Fleshbag! He is the new president! I deserve your respect! Which holiday special do you desire for your punishment? Please, th th there's no need for that, okay? How about this? How do you like being a dog, Mr. Cody? The f*** was that? I don't know, man, but it was a holiday special, apparently. Why would anyone make that for kids? Wombo can do this all day! Okay, okay. Okay, I, um... I have a holiday special I want to do. You do? Yes. So, I was thinking, since I, I'm, I'm such a Scrooge, you know, maybe we could do a Christmas carol. That would... That would be fun, right? Okay! Ooh! I, Cody from 2015, am the ghost of Christmas past. I didn't want to shave for this very short bit, and I'm here to tell you about the man you once were. It is I, the ghost of Christmas present, or just, you know, just you from now. Another you from now. Ooh, it is I, the ghost of what's yet to come. This f***ing geezer, who even is this guy? I'm you, but from the future, future you. I. This is like the fifth time we've met. I don't see it. Yeah, you don't really seem like a future ghost. You're like, I don't know, you're too... He's underwhelming. Yes, right, that's it. Like, you're trying to be from the future, but I feel as if we'd be much cooler. I'm cool. I have a soda can collection. You wanna see it? Get him! What? Ha! 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 F you! You felt f Thanks for the help, guys. Jeez. What? You just yelled, get him. We don't know what that means. Yeah, it's not like we started an email chain about this. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to agree with my two handsome friends who like me. How could you? It's my turn to talk, Warmbo. You got your f***ing election. You got your President Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., the piece of shit. Now it's time for you to shut your flapping hole and listen. Did he just say President Biden? I get it, man. You think we're bitter. You know, we wanted Bernie, etc. Except you're the ones who won't shut the fuck up about Bernie Sanders as a crutch to get away with ignoring criticism of Joe Biden, the, you know, next president. It's not bitterness, it's frustration with seeing a bunch of centrist f who ushered in this fascist oaf and then thinking the antidote to Trumpism is the stuff you did right before he was elected. You people don't learn a f***ing thing. Hey, do we have to be here for this? Actually, you know what? No, I really don't. We already did like a whole movie with this bit, so you just get out of here. Awesome. I got a tweet, so. Well, I can certainly stick around. Beat the road, you tin hoarding f***. Oh. Oh. Now you listen to me. You're gonna get the f*** out of my house right now. Actually, wait, do you have a wallet? Give me your f***ing wallet. Give me all your money on you right now. I'm gonna take your f***ing wallet, you little twerp. So that's how it's gonna be, huh, Mr. Cody? You know, we're people too. I mean, I'm a puppet, but you understand. I, we have feelings. And Wombo has had a very hard year, you know? Wombo wanted to play with his friends and have, like, all kinds of puppet sex, but Wombo had to stay indoors and watch a very bad man say very bad things about minorities and Democrats. I know you did, Wombo. Can't Wombo just be a little happy that the bad fascist man is no longer going to be the president? Then we can maybe heal and, and not have a Hitler? That, that there will now be people in power who represent those who were once underrepresented? Or, or is all hope really lost? Ugh. No, Warmbo. All hope isn't lost. Okay. I'm sorry, I can be a little... Shit lipped! What? Shit 
no, like brash or something. God, what I'm saying is that we can't trick ourselves into thinking that electing Joe Biden is anything resembling progress and to pretend like it is or that we're somehow out of the woods here or like Biden doesn't actually suck ass is going to lead us right back to that bad man you don't like. You don't want the bad man back, do you? No! Wombo doesn't. Exactly. And so, Wombo, I'm just scared that if we don't remind people that and, you know, bully the sh** out of the Democratic Party, we're never going to break the cycle. Wombo, why don't you just go have a seat or something? Okay. Holy sh**. I mean, Wormbo's right. He, he's not just some straw man with my hand deep inside of him. He's a lot of people who perhaps can't devote their lives to political rage, who want to go back to a world that isn't centered on one terrible man. It's a very reasonable wish, but much like the way this virus works, it's not going to be one big clean break. It's going to stretch out and take a lot of work. We can't cut corners and we can't just go back to normal. See, there was a certain democratic smugness and cynical political routine that made it extremely easy for Trump to harness disillusionment in a great deal of Americans tired of the same old shit. Yes, racists were there too. A lot, a lot of racists. But like, for example, in rural America, there's been a streak of Democrats losing elections, all of which did so after basing their campaigns on being friendly with big conservative agricultural corporations, not understanding that rural America doesn't just care about farms and in fact have concerns about junk like healthcare and climate change and jobs. This lack of understanding has been credited to former Obama Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack, a man who once almost resigned because he didn't think he had anything to do. The point here being that rural America doesn't feel like they're being listened to by Democrats and don't vote for them. And for some reason, like Trump instead. Anyway, can you guess who Biden just picked to be his secretary of agriculture? Tom f***ing Vilsack. The guy I just mentioned. Tom beat out Representative Marsha Fudge, a black woman who was actively seeking a position at the USDA and would represent a bold new direction for agriculture as she was seen to unite rural and urban America while addressing ongoing racial discrimination towards black farmers, as well as cabinet picks in general. To quote Marsha Fudge herself, as this country becomes more and more diverse, we're going to have to stop looking at only certain agencies as those that people like me fit in. You know, it's always, we want to put the black person in labor or HUD. Very good point, Marsha. I hope you get the job. Oh wait, I just remembered, Tom Vilsack already got it. Luckily for Marsha, she wasn't left out of Biden's cabinet though, getting a position at HUD. F***ing HUD. So yeah, just a taste of the political cynicism, the back to normal bureaucracy that turned people toward the very abnormal president we've had to endure. As for the smugness, do you remember how prominent liberal figures regarded Trump before he was elected? The, the comedians, the politicians, and how within the span of the same month, Trump was roasted both on Comedy Central and at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Say what you will about uh, Mr. Trump, he certainly would bring some change to the White House. All kidding aside, obviously we all know about your credentials and breadth of experience. Um, for example, uh, no, seriously, just recently in an episode of Celebrity Apprentice, at the steakhouse, the men's cooking team uh, did not impress the judges from Omaha Steaks. And there was a lot of blame to go around, but you, Mr. Trump, recognized that the real problem was a lack of leadership. And so ultimately you didn't blame Little John or Meatloaf. <laughs> you fired Gary Busey. And these are the kind of decisions that would keep me up at night. People love to credit this as why Trump ran. 
But he'd been thinking of running for a long time before this. And what this actually represented was how harmless and a joke we thought he was. And in fact, the only reason the fraud billionaire who vlogged about the president being born in Kenya was at the correspondence dinner is because the Washington Post invited him. And as a result, gave him legitimacy as being someone the president would personally address. It gave him a voice, kept him in the political conversation, as did his appearance on SNL where he did an ironic sketch about how good of a president he would be, as did our smug urging for him to actually run because it would be funny and ha ha, who would even vote for him? Again, I feel like this country is stronger than any individual you can throw at it. So I don't hate any of these people. And I don't think personally that the damage they can do is so drastic and so great that we would ever... Uh, be run off course by one individual. Okay. James Buchanan comes to mind, but I'm going to go back. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You are old. I am, and I'm ancient. All right. Um, how about Donald Trump? I pray. For or against? That he runs. Do you f***ing hear what he just said? Do you remember the hubris? I bring this up because while you'd really think that after these four years, we'd have learned a lesson, the Obamas, as in Barack and Michelle Obama, are currently working on a comedy series about Donald Trump to be released in the future. Because Lord knows what we need right now as a nation is to keep talking about Donald Trump and to never stop and just keep his name going, keep him in the conversation, not as a cautionary figure, but as a hilarious punching bag we're gonna once again underestimate. You know, take, take some easy jabs, keep his base fired up. What a grand idea. The smugness, the back to cynical normalcy, the attempt at compromising with conservatives. Where do you really think that's all going to lead? And now that same smugness is starting to be felt hard from progressives who feel like they're also being alienated. A lot of people in our community are getting a little anxious because they are not seeing enough of the progress they thought they would have seen at this point. Let's not disappoint them and let's not get to a place where voters in Georgia begin to second guess. Okay, let me respond. I, I, I've got I've to go. Let me respond. There's a lot to respond to here. Let's get something straight. You shouldn't be disappointed. What I've done so far is more than anybody else has done this far. Okay, number one. Number two. I mean what I say when I say it. I mean what I say when I say it. I'm the only person who's ever run on three platforms that I was told could not possibly win the election. And I never ceased from it. One was on restoring the soul of this country because of what I saw happen in Charlottesville. That was it. No one else was talking about it. The words of presidents matter. Nobody else. No progressive was talking about. I did. Who does that sound like to you? That self-congratulatory, spiteful tone. Like if someone, I don't know, put that over a picture of Donald Trump and took out like five words, would you not believe he said it instead of Joe Biden? Like, I know Trump was devastating, like more kids in cages than the previous president, kids in cages devastating. That's not lost on me. And we should be happy that he's not the president anymore. Of course, that's great news. And now, the most important thing is making sure he doesn't come back. But it sure seems moot if the new party in power doesn't listen to activists who create the movements that the establishment co-opts, or listen to the younger generation for which Joe Biden allegedly claims he's going to be a transitional president, despite, uh, these old f everywhere, or to listen to what the people are genuinely in need of. Part of the conversation in that audio with the civil rights leaders was about Tom Vilsack and how his firing of a Georgia civil rights hero doesn't help them in the upcoming election. But Joe was like, no, I'm right. And the real problem is defund the police. In fact, be grateful for him for saying Trump was racist. It ain't worth the job if I can't say what I believe. I didn't want to run this time. I ran this time because of the racist son of a gun who was president of the United States of America. That's why I ran. You've never seen me shy away. In the middle of the debate, I called him a racist. In the middle of the debate with him, I took on white supremacists. 
I'm the guy that took on every single time somebody was threatened in this country. The only white boy you know who did it, period, out there, every single time. So look, all I'm saying here is, guys and ladies, we're on the same exact page. He didn't even want to run, you ungrateful f I mean, we didn't either. Obama didn't. But the point is, getting rid of Trump is moot if these f***ing assholes continue to cling to power and stop real change from happening. Maybe some retirements are in order. Live out your days relaxing, despite what Biden's freakish appointment to his coronavirus task force might think. Because it seems like they cling to power and their contempt twists into resentment and stubbornness for the old way of doing things. You know, like this guy who didn't want Joe to run said. You've said you've written this book for young people of the next generation. You're 59, I'm 56. What would you like us Gen Xers to know? Uh, get out of the way. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> hey, Mr. Yes We Can, maybe you should take your own advice. Maybe you could have actually used your position to support the candidate overwhelmingly supported by everyone younger than you. Maybe it's not enough to just collect brown and women pundits to deflect criticism as Clinton advisor and now Biden cabinet pick Neera Tandon once advised. Maybe we're like, really far past tweets calling for change. And now that you guys are actually in charge again, we're gonna need a lot more than a collection of vague and progressive sounding ideas and an actual plan to help people and prevent another Trump in 2024. Like listening to that audio and hearing him talk about the soul of the country, it really sounds like Biden thinks that just like, that's it. He came out, he said, oh, sir, have you no decency? This is not who we are. And now it's back to business. Fire off a tweet about the perseverance of our imagination's dreams and call it a day. Just throwing around colorful, semi-familiar, confusing and pandering bullshit like, like this. <laughs> gibberish. Pandering, weird, confusing gibberish that feels slightly sinister and isn't helping anyone. That's what I'm getting at. It's a perfect analogy. This is how Mr. Cody sees Democrats? More or less. This makes Wombo feel sad for Mr. Cody. This makes Mr. Cody sad for Mr. Cody. What even is this? It's the Star Wars Holiday Special, Warmbo, and it's terrible. I think Warmbo now knows your pain. Thanks. <laughs> it's kinda neat, I guess. Not the worst. I should kinda into it now. I mean, pretty high, and this is real wild. So, you know, Warmbo, I never hated the holidays. I just think we can celebrate the good things while not forgetting all the work that needs to be done. That's all. Hey, bud, you want to make some hot chocolate with me? Watch eyes wide shut. Warmbo would like that very much. <laughs> all right, you got it, pal. We saved Christmas. Or something? I don't know. Happy holidays, peace on earth, love and such. And while you may not be able to be with your family right now, you can still be with them in your heart. And maybe you can all get together on Zoom or Skype or whatever, share some laughs, and watch an erotic Nicole Kidman thriller together. Be it Eyes Wide Shut, or maybe Malice, or To Die For, or perhaps Birthday Girl, or The Hours. You get the idea. Holiday special accomplished. It's a happy holidays Things are back to normal Yeah, everything's okay Ho, 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 ho Dash down the halls with presents and cake Ho, 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 ho Ho, 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 ho,
everybody. Thanks for watching, and like and subscribe to the channel, and patreon.com slash some more news, and a podcast called Even More News, and like.